Hey guys, welcome back to Teal House Farm. Uh, it's early morning here, it's about 5.30. I'm gonna make some, or start some really simple breakfast real quick and then head outside before the kids get up. And because we wanna get our new pasture open for our goats, they definitely need more to eat. And we need to get them in the back pasture. It's been super dry here, which we've talked about before. Thankfully it rained yesterday. But the pasture they've been on, basically they've eaten everything they like and what's left is a lot of really tall, dry looking, sad grass. And so we're gonna get them in our back pasture, which is wooded and it has lots of brush and things that goats and sheep love. And it should, uh, should make them real happy and give them something new to grace. We gotta check the fence, we gotta get the gate open and put up a makeshift gate so they don't go into the old pasture, all those kinds of things. And I just wanna get it done this morning before the kids wake up because once the kids are up, things like that get more difficult to do because I don't really want the little guys trumping behind me in the tall grass because you just never know if there's gonna be a snake or something in there. So they don't need to be out there doing that with me. So let's go ahead and start some breakfast and get it in the oven so that it's cooking while we're outside. And that way when we come in and it's time to get the kids up, breakfast is all ready to go and it's one less thing to do. Okay, first we get our stand mixer out. We're gonna make some banana bread. Uh, this is a really easy choice for morning when I wanna get a project done because once I mix it up, it's gonna go in the oven for like 45 minutes. And so got plenty of time to go outside and get some work done and then come in and have it ready and not really have to worry about burning it. So we're just gonna make a single batch. Usually when I make banana bread, I make a humongous batch so I can freeze some, but I only have three bananas today. So single batch. I will link the recipe below. We have a great whole foods, no white sugar banana bread recipe that the kids really love. It uses some whole wheat flour too, so it's just better for you. So I'll link that below and you guys can try that recipe yourself, but it's a great substitute for those sugar filled banana bread recipes that I'm sure most of us grew up on. So we so. get that into the oven, get our timer on my phone so I don't forget about it and we're heading outside. We're gonna check the fence where it is now, make sure we're starting at a good point, and that's great. So we're gonna feed the sheep and the goats their grain so that they stay in the barn and out of the way while we're getting the fence ready so we don't have any escapees. Just keep them busy for just a little bit so we can get some work done. Okay, this is where they have been grazing. You can see there's still a lot of tall grass, but a lot of it is looking really dry, okay? And they don't really like it, so they're just kind of picking at it. These are meat animals. I want them to be fat and sassy, so we're gonna move them so that they're happier. So we're working on opening up this paddock here, which you can see is in a wooded area. I've got a old barn there, it needs to be knocked down. Just a lot of nice lush greens, brush, trees, goats love tree leaves that they can reach and things. So th they're gonna be real happy here. Um, I've already started opening up the gate and I call it a gate. We don't have actually actual gates here because gates are expensive. If you ever actually bought like a metal gate, they look really nice, but it's an expensive purchase. So we make gates out of strands of turbo wire. So these are turbo wire fences. We'll just make a strand and tie it across. And then when we need that paddock open, we remove the four or five strands and that's the gate. So it's a little more work, but it saves hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So I already removed three of the strands. I need to remove this top one. And I was thinking I would put a strand from there to there to close off this second paddock, but I actually am not gonna do that because I don't think it really matters. They're gonna be happier here if they want in here. It's not really a big deal herd stays together all the time. So I think I'm just gonna leave them both open and save myself a little bit of work. If we were having an issue where, or a year where the grass was just great, and we wanted to make sure they were doing really focused grazing to keep uh, weed control down or something like that, you would definitely close off this paddock so they focus their energy here. This year is not that year. We're not getting a lot of rain. It's a struggle. The grass is really dying in a lot of areas. So we're gonna give them more land to graze so they have as much opportunity as possible to eat as much as they can find. Now in the winter, we close them down to just this one paddock here that's behind the barn because there's just not a whole lot to eat anyway. And so to save us time and energy, we disconnect the fence 
from itself. So you don't have to worry about maintaining miles and miles of fence in the middle of winter when snow and ice and all sorts of things are going to be falling on your fence causing the lines to fall down. Saves us a lot of time and energy, makes winter much easier. So we're going to reconnect this part of the fence and then we're going to go walk all of our miles of fence and just look and see if we have anywhere where the fence really definitely needs to be fixed. I don't have a lot of time this morning. I want to make sure I get a charge through the whole fence. But if it's not a high charge, it'll be okay just for today. Um, tomorrow I'll have much more time and can go through and I will actually weed eat under the fence and that'll, that'll help boost the charge too. But we're just going to make sure the fence isn't down anywhere today. They're going to be so excited about all this. They're not going to be testing the fence today. And as long as it has some charge through it, we won't really have a problem with anybody getting out. And tomorrow we can focus on getting a real punch on the fence so as they eat through this and start getting more curious and make sure it'll keep them contained. Okay first step here we need to reconnect the fence so you just want to make sure you get it nice and around the insulators not touching the fence if it touches the metal part of the fence then it's going to short out and your fence won't have anything. Now there's probably better insulators for this job because I need string coming from all four directions at some points, which means that somewhere you're going around the fence, but this is what we have on hand. So you just have to watch carefully. Now we're going to walk the fence line and we're going to look for any debris that's fallen on the fence or anywhere the fence has been knocked over. It definitely needs to be uh, trimmed around the bottom of the fence with the weed eater. You could definitely tell that, but I just don't have time for that today. So we're going to just remove any large obstructions, make sure the fence isn't down anywhere and reconnect it anywhere that it's down and worried about weed eating tomorrow. There we go, we found the piece that fell down. We're gonna reconnect it and we need to find the other end. And we get that reconnected. And that really seemed to be the only place the fence was down. This post is really tipped. So you go to put it back in the ground and then we realize, well, it's not just tipped, it's actually broken. So a quick trip back to the barn for another step in post. And we'll get that replaced and that'll make the fence stand up nice and straight. There, that was pretty simple. And now everything looks nice and straight down to the end. You can tell there's been some deer bedding down in this field. They'll be a little surprised when that fence gets turned back on. And the last thing that we need to do is reconnect the fence at the front of the back paddock, if that makes sense. So we're going to do the same thing we did at the very beginning. Now everything is all reconnected. They have this great area. It's L-shaped. I know that's hard to tell from here, but it's got a long side there right in front of me, and then it goes all along the back. Now we just have to hope the sheep and goats realize that the gate is open. We might have to coax them in there. There we go. I still got four minutes left on the clock, so I'm going to finish my other farm chores real fast. Just give the geese some uh, water, basically, is all I got left to do. And then we'll go in and we'll have some breakfast. So that should keep them happy for a while. We would eventually like to get them out on this very front pasture, too, to help keep it knocked down. That's a much bigger project because there's several issues with the fence up there. And, and I just don't have time to deal with that right now, so we'll just ignore it and I got plenty to do for right now. So thanks so much for watching everybody. We will see you all next time.